Bring in D. Snyder. Dig D. Snyder for the knows. love of metal. It's his first. <laughs> they are D. <laughs> right here, bro. Do you think D knows how much you like Sean Paul, Jim? I, he probably does. He wouldn't <laughs> surprise him. Yeah. Sean Paul? Do you Jim know is Sean a Paul? big Sean Paul guy. No, I like Sean, Sean Paul. Who is Sean Paul? You've heard him before. He's kind of like our... He's playing right now. Yeah, it's kind of like reggae. <laughs> yeah. That's not his oh. best song. Oh, no, I'm a button pusher. You are? Yeah, this would last, last like one one note. Like, skip. Like, yeah, by that, the... So you do? You skip through songs? Yeah, hit, it, hit it. Well, you can't... And I'm so old, I'm referring to pushing the button. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a little different now, but yeah, I skip. What you, would you keep you on? Swipe. What would you listen to if it came on? Every time. Oh, God. Every time? Yeah. Uh, ACDC. Yeah. I mean, you That's can't turn you, I thought yeah. Axel did a good job with them. Did you hear, hear Axel? It was great. It was great. It was like, and he was like, so not Axel. Not, right. not on stage, but like, the word was he showed up on time. For those oh, wow. Guys, yeah. He was like, yo, never late. And they asked him about it. He said, uh. I can't be late for Angus Young. You, like, you can't fuck with Angus that's Young. That's amazing. How do you tighten this? I got to be shorter. <laughs> it's, you know, yeah. Jim just wants to be taller than everybody in the room. He does. Like that. He's got that extension on his seat. He does. He likes to hold up. None of the seats go quite as tall as Jim's seat does. Yeah. So don't even try. That's yeah. Because there's like a plastic fist on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just relaxing to put my leg up like this. That's right. I'm a short guy. I'm a little fella. Do you listen to your own music? Never. Like for Not for, yeah. Well, I mean, you do in the process. But not for pleasure. Yeah, once right. I mean it, you've listened to it so many times, yeah. from, times from the you know creation of the song to the demoing of the song to the recording of the song to the post you know mixing of the song and by the time and then you got to go out on the road you rehearse it so it's like never for pleasure. By the time it's actually when it's on the radio, you're like, all right, I'm done with it. Will you turn it off? Or will you leave it on? That's a good question. Um, I won't turn it off. I mean, never, <laughs> yeah, never, come on. Never. You're not going to be disrespectful. Yeah, you can't, you know? <laughs> I can't be insulting. How about if you walk into a party and they're playing it? Or do you hate when you're somewhere and they see that you walk in and they put on, like, oh. we're not going to take <laughs> It's the worst. <laughs> I it's see the, you over there. It, it's like, yeah, I, oh, I forgot the words. Thank you so yeah. much for the reminder. Yeah, I was in, I was in the Apple store mm. the other day. It just getting my wife's iPad fixed, you know, baseball hat. Just, you know, sneakers, shorts, sure. I'm just in there, tank top, and I'm just, just laying low, and all of a sudden, someone spotted me, you know, <laughs> like, tough. I'm the Jay Leno of heavy metal, yeah. you know? <laughs> I got the jaw. I was skiing, completely covered except for my lips and jaw, and then some guy's like, yo, D, what's up? I'm like, what the hell's <laughs> hanging out? Oh, yeah, the mouth. The face. <laughs> so, uh, and they they put on, we're not going to take it in the store, you know. Like, oh, my just God. Let, just in case you didn't know he was here. Right. Now you do, and let's all just do this and point at him. Right, and you know what? It's probably the one thing he's going to want to hear yeah. is that song that he's heard <laughs> over sure. and over. He's going to want He's going to enjoy this. <laughs> well, did you see, uh, what was it? The Bon Jovi was at a fucking wedding, and the singer was making Bon Jovi sing one of his own songs. And yeah. It was humiliating. Bon Jovi's like, I don't want to do this. That I don't want to do this. Is my pet peeve. Um, and you know, I think it probably goes for comedians too. For some reason, people won't expect entertainers to do their job at a party or a gathering. Yeah, I don't even do mine on stage, much less a fucking <laughs> yeah, party. Yeah. You know, and, and and they want you to, oh, get up and sing a song. Like, what do you do? Well, I'm a mechanic. Well, go rotate my tires. Right. Yeah, go you right. Know, fix no, something. Oh, I'm not doing it. It's my day. Yeah. yeah. It's your day off. Well, I'm singing. You go in the parking lot and you change my tire for me. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I'll get up and sing. Yeah. I've disappointed so many people in person. That's so great where they expect you to be funny all the time. It's just boring. How right? are you? Hey, right, I want to hang myself. All right, good. Nice talking to you. Yeah. Yeah. Be fun. They kind of look at you and wait for you to do something. Yeah. They expect they expect you to be that person all the time. But, but with people, music, I always hate because comedian we don't play they don't play me on necessarily like do radio right for musicians you guys get in the car and you'll just turn it on and hear yourself i'm like i don't think it's gonna be awful well they hear you on the stations i listen to the comedy channel oh i guess so yeah, yeah that's yeah, true i, never I don't listen to music i you listen don't. to the comedy channels i love that so i hear you all the time thank you you're well covered thank I, you what genres do you like besides uh metal <sighs> i like old r&b like what's old R&B? Sam Cooke. Oh, old Otis R&B. Redding, Wilson yeah. Pickett, that stuff. Stax, Motown. Yeah. And, um, you know, 50s, you know, doo-wop and that kind of when stuff. When was the last time something new came out in any genre that you were like, this is good? When I hear something new, that it lights me up, you know? So, like, there's a band I discovered uh, called Monster Truck. Mm-hmm. They're a new band out of Canada, Toronto. But they kind of 
Grand Funk meets Leonard Skinner, but a bunch of young guns. And it's just, I was like, wow, this is awesome. You know, so got the T-shirt and everything. Yeah. But uh, it, when you, when you, it's tough to get, like, as, and once you're in the, and someone said to me, it was um, Tom Savini, special effects makeup artist. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Said, <clears throat> we get in the business for the magic, and then we figure out how they do the trick. You know, so the first thing we do, we see a band on stage and go, I want to be that guy. But then we find out. It's not just a magic show up there. It is a right. process. You yeah. get into it. And I'm not griping. I'm just saying it no longer has that same same luster that it had when you were in the audience with your jaw dropping, right. just looking at these guys from another planet. Well, it's not another world anymore. Now you see the reality of it. It's, it's, you see what the real life is. You got to get on the bus right after. Yeah. You're yeah. tired. You can't sleep. Like the normal job well, stuff. comedians. I mean, you know, you... Make people laugh, and you do it well. All right, but you what you learned is that set that was so polished that you saw somebody blew you away on stage, and you said, "I want to do that." That took like months to get that half hour together. You know, and I've yeah. been learning that from watching um, Seinfeld's comedian in Cars, which I think is just oh, really interesting too. I like it too. Just the study of it and how it just and, when, and his movie, The Comedian. Sure, he talked about just the process of assembling all those pieces to make five minutes, to make 15, 30, an hour, ninety yeah. minutes set. Get up there and do an hour and a half for a comedian. That took a, takes a long time to get that set. And then once you film it, you got to dump it. Once it's on it's film, over. you got to dump it. Oh, that was the, the famous uh, Johnny Carson thing. You get on Johnny Carson, you do your show, you kill, and then you need new material because everybody right. knows the joke. Yeah, they all if know the jokes. If you're doing f- five minutes on Johnny Carson, you need everything plus five minutes because you need new material that is just as strong so that when people go out and see your shows, you're still fun. Or that five minutes has to be sp- like kind of uh, sp- uh, sprinkled in an hour set. So if you're doing a five-minute TV set on Carson and yeah. you sprinkle it in an hour set, people will tolerate it. Well, do you get that? I mean, um, Dice had that going where people wanted to hear hickory dickory dock like sure. they had to hear like the hit yeah do, do you do, do, do other comedians get that they want to hear the hit there's bits they'll ch- yell but not like it. those were iconic bits i toured with dice for three years and they would scream and he hated when they would scream for the poems and if the crowd was good he'd do them if he liked the crowd he would do them but there's other times where he'd go no because but they, they probably, were annoying them. They probably shout at you for the Monster Rain story. I yell Monster Rain a lot. Yeah, they'll yeah. yell that. Or, or they, they want the characters. Or Chip, they'll yeah. yell a lot. Yes. Yeah. I, I said, like, Brian Regan. I don't know if you know Brian Regan. He's yeah. a, a comic. But, like, he has to, when I've seen him, up front at the top of his show, say, at the end of the show, I'm going to do requests. So don't shout out anything. Let me do the material, and then I'll do your requests. Sure. And that's how he keeps everybody. And then they all <laughs> go crazy. Go yeah, I got yeah. schooled by Eddie Murphy. Um, I saw Murphy at the at the height. Um, he was at the Tillis Center, I think, on Long Island. It was you know, Saturday Night Live or whatever. He's doing his set, and I yell out. Now, I'm not famous for that. I yell, do buckwheat. Oh. And he goes, fuck you. You do buckwheat. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> well, okay, I'll just shut up now. Chappelle gets it, though. Dave gets it yeah. with, uh, with uh, what, what are they yelling about from the Rick? I'm Rick James, Rick James, bitch. bitch. He walked off stage one night. It's like when you're doing 15,000 people. And there's 500 yelling at it. It's like frustrating. Like you, once in a while, you don't mind it, but it, when you're on that level and there's that many people yelling, because yeah, those it, things haven't stopped. Like his Rick James thing, the Little John thing, a whole bunch of stuff from that TV show. Yeah, it's iconic. Has lived on throughout. And you guys don't have the defense of. I was rehearsing yesterday, so my voice is shot, and I have to sing tonight. Anyway, right. Um, but you don't have the defense of the loud wall of sound, like the rock band. And I've always, I've had so much respect. I've been friends with so many comedians, Sam and Bob Goldthwaite and so many people. yesterday. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and just the, the idea of just, you guys up there with your dick in your hand, man. And no word that's said from the crowd can be ignored. Because we're just blasting rock and roll. They could be screaming, we're not going to take it. The whole show, I don't hear it. Right. I don't have to respond to it, right. you know. So is that what's going on? Because you have a new solo album. Yeah. For do the you, love of metal, yeah. For the love of metal. Do you, like, when you're crafting what the live show is going to be to go along with this album, do you go, okay, we got to sprinkle in some hits here and there to keep everybody at bay? It is absolutely the terror of every rock star playing new material. I've heard... Elton John, just you know, a couple of years ago, was talking. He goes, yeah, I'm going on tour. I'm a little a little nervous. And they said, what are you nervous about? He goes, well, I got a new album. And the minute you do a new song, 
you see their faces glaze over. Right. I call it the bathroom songs. <laughs> okay, because you go, the minute it's like Pavlov's dog. The minute they hear the words, here's what off the new record, you see people going, gee, I gotta take a piss. Yeah. And then like you see them. I, and I'd say it on stage, I can see you standing up and leaving. <laughs> I, I, I'm not blind. I said, here we, we we slave, we kill ourselves, we work on something we're proud of, and the minute we say, here's a new one. You go to get a burger and a beer, you know. So <laughs> it, it does it, suck. It sucks, but it's it's just so. I, what I'm doing is so much new material. They don't got enough piss in them. <laughs> <laughs> so gonna go, I, I really should go to the bathroom now, but I've, I'm, I don't feel it really. Yeah. So. I piss, I shit, I got a burger. There's nothing else in this building yeah. to do. And to watch. watch. Yeah. And it doesn't matter who you are. I've heard Paul McCartney talk about it. I saw Zeppelin on the physical graffiti tour, but they hadn't released the album yet at Madison Square Garden. They went into Kashmir. Half the fucking place left to go to the bathroom. Of course, in Madison Square Garden, you never heard Kashmir before? <laughs> it just sounded like a dirge. Yeah. And it went on for two days. <laughs> <laughs> so, everybody, so, I mean, here is like, you know, you're seeing for the first time Kashmir and nobody knew what it was, and they went to get a, a beer. And wow. you're at the Gramercy. Are there tickets available tonight? You're at the Gramercy with uh, with Otep and Jamie Josta, who we love. Yeah, it's a listening party tonight for my new album, and Jamie Josta and friends. I'm getting up there. Uh, I'm getting up and doing a few songs with Josta, and Otep's playing, and um, it's going to be fun. This record is completely unexpected. I really wasn't planning to do any more music, and Josta literally challenged me to do a true metal record, um, and I said, um, all right, let's go. And we went in, no budget, no record deal, just out of pocket and started creating this thing. And the reviews have been incredible. People hearing stuff in advance, they're kind of stunned that 63 year old D Snyder has made the heaviest record of his career and is still like sc sing screaming like a lion. So do you get scared when it comes out that people aren't going to like it? I mean, cause music takes a like, if I try a joke, if I write a joke that day, I can try it in front of an audience that night. Right. So there's kind of an immediate, and that's one advantage to doing stand up is you get a much faster sense of what to do. You have the completed work and then they like it or they hate it. That's the live versus any, even a movie or a record or anything like that. No, but I, I did a, a a, a, an album of Broadway show tunes, so nothing scares me. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever thought about doing an album uh, where it, you know the crux of it would be how crazy you are, and you could call it D's Nuts? Uh, <clears throat> yes, that, that's that's crossed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I mean, you've got the built-in D thing. I, I would absolutely take advantage of it. Uh, the album is called For the Love of Metal, and it's available next Friday, July 27th, which is when we're in Montreal. We are in Montreal. Um, so everybody should check it out. Yeah, and... pre-orders going on now at themartyrstore.com, and um, video for Become the Storm is uh, online right now and a couple other songs. Are you That's ever going to do any more, uh, like a follow-up to the documentary that was on Netflix? Because I watched it. It was great. But it was the it was basically the story of Twisted Sister before they got famous. Like, yeah, it, we it... are Twisted Fucking Sister. Um, well, first of all, that was done independently, even though we, we supported it, because um, some documentarian heard our story, the fact that we were together for 10 years before the world discovered us. And that's like a stupid amount of time. Yeah. That's like, really? You can't take a hint? <laughs> a <lot of> time? <laughs> you know, 10 years. So, um, and so the doc goes right up to the band getting signed to Atlantic Records. And people say, are you going to do the second half? And I go, well, that's really behind the music. It's, it's already been kind done. of been done, yeah. and that's the typical, all the stories are the same. Right. They get the deal, they have the hit, the band comes apart at the seams, and then they reconnect. Right. And, and, and the reunion tour, and they're fatter and balder and older, and, <laughs> and they go out there and, and, and you know, and, and, and they're friends once more. You know, so that's kind of predictable. But we know the story. The We Are Twisted Fucking Sister documentary is, is kind of surprising, because most people don't know that story. What's well, the before we have to wrap yeah. up? What's the longest you guys went without talking? Fifteen years. Wow. A long time. It's a long time. Fuck. 